and this, the last thing I want to show you is how to output analysis information through color. So there's ways to work with color in Grasshopper uh, by basically assigning colors to objects in the form of a custom preview. And there's also a specific way to color uh, mesh, basically. So you see the tag here? It has this kind of like uh, frayed edge. This means that it doesn't have any outputs. The only output is things it's generating in the viewport in Rhino. And that's kind of when you know that something is just a visualization node. So tag is one of them. The other one is custom preview. Uh, if you type in custom, custom preview, it's the same thing. You see it has a frayed edge. In custom preview, you just use for creating specific visualizations of geometry in your Rhino viewport. And all it takes is a, uh, some geometry, and it gives it a custom shader or a custom color. So if we take our uh, surfaces back here and plug them into the geometry, you see that it's given, let me just hide everything else. It's given everything this pink color, because for some reason the default material is pink. Uh, we can also give it a custom color. So there's a bunch of different color inputs. Uh, the easiest one, if you type in color with a U again, because it's Great Britain standard, uh, color swatch. So color swatch is pretty simple. You have a swatch. If you double click, it gives you this color selection interface. And here it is, and you can plug that directly into the shader, and it'll give it that color. All right. So that's a really basic visualization. We can color everything in the geometry at one color. What we want to do now is have the color be a representation of some data. In this case, the areas of the surfaces. And what we can do is actually, instead of using just one color, we want to create a range of colors with each color denoting the area of the panel. So the first thing I'll, I'll do is I'll go back to where I have my area, and I want to find the minimum and the maximum area so I can set the range of colors that I'm going to use. All right, so the easiest way to get a min and max, again, there's no dedicated min and max tool, so you kind of have to hack it from what's available. Um, the simplest way to do this is to sort the list of areas. So right now I have a bunch of different areas. They're in random order, right? They're just sequenced however the panels are in the model. The first thing I'll do is I'll sort the list. So you can just type in sort, sort list component. Here you plug in your list into K, and it gives you a sorted list from minimum to maximum. And now to get the minimum, I can just get the first item, right? Because it's by definition the smallest. So here I'll just type in item, list item. By default, this will be zero, which is the first element. In the grasshopper, the counting starts with zero. And now, so that's my minimum. I can rename this min. That's my minimum size. To get the max, I'll just copy the minimum. And a quick uh, kind of shortcut, instead of trying to find what the last element is, which you can do, it just takes one more node. But a quick way to do this is just to go into these input shortcuts and reverse the list. So now instead of going from smallest to biggest, it's going from biggest to smallest. So the first element's gonna give me my biggest number, right? So now we have our min max. Um, the way I'm going to generate my range of colors is through a gradient node. So in parameters, inputs, there's again a lot of these different inputs for color. One is gradient. So if you drag this into your to your interface, you get this gradient. So this works just like gradients in Photoshop or uh, Illustrator, and what it lets you do is basically set a, uh, limit numbers, so the smallest and the biggest number, and that will denote the two extremes of your gradient, and then it will let you feed in a number, uh, a list of numbers, and each number is going to be located along this gradient, depending on what your uh, limits are, right? So that's why I wanted to find the minimum and the maximum. So I basically want to say that the smallest panel will be this on this edge, and the biggest panel will be on this edge. I'm going to feed in all of my areas. I'm going to get the same number of colors that uh, denote the area of that panel. Um, so this default pink to red is pretty lame. Uh, if you can mess with these gradients by controlling it yourself. Uh, you can change all these colors and do it yourself. There's also a 
variety of preset gradients. If you right click on this um, color wheel in the top left, there's some presets. Um, there's the standard green, yellow, red. Um, so I'm going to use that. So for L0, that's their lower limit. I'm going to plug in the minimum. L1 is the upper limit. Plug in the max. And then for T, those are all my example data points. I'm going to plug in my original uh, areas. Not from here, right? I don't want the sorted ones. I want them to still correlate with the panels. So then we can one-to-one -one assign all the colors to those panels. So from area, I'm going to go into T. And this will be take one of these panels, see what's going on. This will just generate a list of RGB colors uh, along this gradient according to the data coming in. So now we can take those colors and plug them in instead of this line green, and it should give us different colors for the different panels. It worked, Hooray. All right, so now we have a quick visualization based that's telling us the size of the different panels um, and color. And you know you don't have to use areas, you can use anything. You can use the normal vector, you can use the angle away from the sun. So you can actually custom make your own kind of uh, sun analysis tool. So again, just to remind you, uh, this model is still dynamic. We can change the resolution these panels and everything will kind of be updated accordingly.